All right, I think we're live. Oh, and there's and my there's cat, cat right away. He just <laughs> as soon as I hit record, he shows up. <laughs> That's hilarious. They know, they know when to show up. Oh man. Uh okay. Let's just I'll have you start with like a brief explanation of yourself creatively, and then I'll jump into some questions. Sure. Um I'm Lori Calcaterra. I'm the writer creator of the <laughs> all new Western apocalypse series called Path of the Pale Rider. Um, I come from production. I was choreographing fight scenes for music videos and uh, short films uh, in Detroit back in 2017 um, when the production company asked me to start writing like short form content for them for their YouTube channel. I wrote a series called The Agency, which we filmed the pilot. Um, I relocated from Michigan to Texas in 2019. But in between 2017 and 2019, I kind of got bit by that writing bug. And I wrote the the concept for Path of the Pale Rider. I wrote the whole script, actually. Um, and it's a it was a full length movie, which then I didn't know what to do with. <laughs> so like what do I do with this now? Um, and people that read it really loved it. And uh, the recommendation was I was supposed to pitch it to Netflix and that just didn't seem appealing to me. Um, and I let a few people read it. And when my husband read it, he said, this is a comic book. And both him and I have read comic books since we were young adults. And um, it was like the light bulb turned on. I was like, yes, you are so right. And I just couldn't see that. I needed someone else to, to help me see what this really was. And uh, we started in 2020 looking for an artist. Um, I had a couple that fell through, took a year off from the project to decide if I really wanted to do it and uh, met my artist, Marco DeFillo in 2020 in January. And uh, we got started. We kickstarted our first uh, our first issue in March of 2022 and published in July of 2022 and have been rocking and rolling since. Um, I've picked gotcha. up other series since then, writing creatively i've joined all sorts of community stuff i now have a show that i podcast on on tuesdays um it's i'm having too much fun to stop <laughs> oh for sure yeah okay. once once you're in the game you're in the game yeah <laughs> yeah that's yeah. awesome so that, that's um when you took the so how many issues are is it going to be to tell the full screenplay okay so the first arc is 12 issues would be the first full movie but I have Dang, a 12 arc. issues. Okay. Yeah. That, that, okay. It's a, I gotcha. it's a full length movie. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I was going to get. It's it like uh, adapting it into the comic form. Did, did you just basically decide? So you didn't take any efforts to be like, all right, let's condense this down to like one book form or just two books. So like 12 issues is basically like, that'd be like, who, uh, two long graphic novels. So like two volumes or three, like four or five issue or whatever. Um, but yeah, so you're at you're like live right now is what issue three or four? Four. We're on four. Okay, so you're at four. So yeah, you're you're not even through the, like the first. Well, it's act, like I guess it's Act One. Yeah, okay. we're closing up Act One with issue number four, and then there's four issues that'll be like the middle act, and then the last four, which will be kind of the resolution of the first arc. But there's 36 issues total for the whole story, and there is an end. There is an end. Um, it's just going to take us a little while to get there. Did you um, adjust anything to make it to where at the end of like your act, it's a bit like a stronger high or low in order to make it more like a series? Like, you know how like instead yes. like you could make it stronger to where it's like more impactful of like it could be an end of a book. You know what I'm saying? Or did you basically just go straight to like, you know, the the full arc is this. You didn't make any real adjustments to the story in, in the um, adaptation. I guess that's what I'm trying to get at is what yeah. did you do to adapt it we, into the comic form? We Well, and that's the hard part is because it has to make sense um, because every issue needs to have like a dilemma, um, some character development, um, some action, a twist or like a, a cliffhanger at the end. So I try to make it so that way there is an arc in every issue on top of there being like the the first act second act third act and then of course the overall arc right yeah, so yeah. we got a lot of stuff to kind of figure out um it was 13 issues and i actually combined 
four and five into four. So this is a bigger issue than we would typically do. Well, our, our issues are normally 24 and this one's 28. So it's not a huge difference. Okay. But I looked at the two um, issues of four and five and it made more sense for them to be together. And then what's going to be five is just, there's so much going on um, that needs to be a standalone itself. So um, yeah, it's there was some adaptation when it came to this next one. Um, but the story is still the story. We just shoved more of the story together. No, yeah, <laughs> I totally get sense. you. So, uh, are you truly just like going issue by issue, funding it, selling it, funding it, selling it, or have you basically, oh, you just step by step, issue by issue? So I yeah. saw, um, I think the the campaign I saw was for issue two, and I saw you like you had a hundred backers for that. So yeah. Tell me, where did you get those backers? Because um, it doesn't seem like uh, you have like that big of a social media following. So it's like it, getting it, there. Uh, I mean, it's there, but it's just like, yeah. so can you like percentage break down? Like, w did some come directly from how many came from Kickstarter? How many came from like friends? How many came from other creators? How many came from social nice media sandwich. or where do you go to get Ooh. your backers and, and stuff like that? I wonder, um, let me go look at three. I wonder if it'll show me the, it won't. Cause, cause my Kickstarter is live right now. A lot of times it'll let you look at like the analytics. You know what I mean? Like yeah, how many yeah, are yeah, coming yeah. from certain places. So like friends and family are definitely on there. Um, percentage wise, I'm not sure, but there's also the, the indie community, right? Yeah. And then, yeah people who have found me organically either on podcasts like this or on my show, which is on YouTube, which I only took over my show like a year ago. Honestly, I've been doing this for like a year and a half. Right. So it's not like I've had 10 years of experience to like build a following. That's um, what, yeah. That's what I'm yeah. like interested in is like, you haven't been doing this around for, for a long that time, long. I mean, right? yeah, it's basically less than 12 months. Basically you're at, your fourth issue funded all of them get growing yeah. an audience in all platforms. So I'm just like, let's break it down. How you, how are you doing that? What, so what do you do um, to promote each book each time other than going yeah. on podcasts like this? Well, I, this is why path of the pale writer is so cool because it's a comic book. It has riddles built into it. And we do fan interactive short films every issue. Oh, whoa, Okay. So if you go look at the Kickstarter page, um, I, it talks about the comic book and the concept is unique too. So it's not, we're not superheroes and blah, blah, blah. like I, I take a bunch of different genres and cram them all together. So basically I would explain it as like Book of Eli, the good, the bad, the ugly, the walking dead and cocaine bear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Like I was like, These, I'm, I'm yep. down with all this stuff. Yep smash them all together. There's some sci-fi, there's some paranormal, there's just a little bit of kind of everything. Cause I'm a super nerd and, um, I enjoy all of that. So it's, it, it fit together with this concept of death being missing or death being broken for everything, you know, and it's not, I love horror and I love zombies, but these, these undead people are people and they, they don't crave to eat other people. Um, they just want to continue on with their lives. They just, their lives <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right in between lives right they we call it passing into the gray so either they're undead years or they're gray years it depends on it's kind of like um they have different colloquialisms depending on where they are you know um they call it something different um so we do a bunch of different stuff which is fun so on the kickstarter um you can see all of the previous riddles and all of the previous short films um the riddles go from like they'll send you to like a group with the other riddle finders um the second one we did when you answer that riddle and the riddle is written in asl because a couple of my characters are fluent in asl jude st Clair being one of them and so when you answer this and you send it to a certain email you get something in the mail from one of my characters. Like Whoa, you're okay. in it, right? You get a postcard from a, one of the characters telling you information like you're in the story. And then the third one we did is a QR code hunt. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's 24 QR codes and um, you just figure out which one is the right one, but it's all like, it's fun stuff. It's stuff that is either inspired path of the pale rider, like 
trailers for Tombstone or trailers for um, Day of the Dead or like um, funny stuff. I have like, there's a Rick Roll in there. There's the Swedish chef making hot sauce. Um, there's He-Man singing. <laughs> there's He-Man singing. It's really funny. Um, but one of them is additional content from Path of a Pale Rider and you cannot find it by searching it. You have to scan the QR code to get to the content. So it's kind of a little scavenger hunt. It doesn't really take any skill to solve it. It's just determination to figure out which one is the right one. I gotcha. And mm -hmm. I, I saw, I thought like, were parts of these choose your own adventure or is this a part of what you're talking about? Like the riddle thing? That's in addition I... to everything else. Oh, okay. So you have like alternate endings? Or... Um, the choose your own adventure is a standalone, but it's, it's an experience based off of the world of path of the pale rider. So you would be putting yourself in that world. You get to wear the hat and the boots and you run bounties in the apocalyptic West. So, um, yeah, they're pretty gruesome deaths. Like <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. You, you're into the hardcore stuff, which I like. So it's I like... like, yeah, you get beheaded. You might get skinned. You might get, you know, suffocated by a swarm of locusts or lit on fire <laughs> or eaten by an undead tiger who knows um there's ways to become undead and keep going in the story which is really cool um there is a way there is a way to beat it okay there's actually two two endings that kind of immortalize you into this um i can't i want to give too much away it immortalizes you into the story and okay. you actually take on a persona which will then show up in the main story wow also the bad guys from the from the choose your own adventure that you duel show up in the main story so i love that because you as the reader of the choose your own adventure when the skinner walks into the main story and my protagonist jude st Clair meets him jude has no idea who this guy is but you will know how dangerous this guy is because he's killed you three times in the choose your own adventure <laughs> so i i is this like a part of when someone does that, that's like one of the perks they do. Is that does that show up in the book or is that just as like the the videos? Did I miss a section of like how does someone like become a part of the comic series or how? is that or can they or are they drawn in or, or written into the story? Well, we do draw ins at times like um, I think we're all through everybody at this point. But like last campaign, we had a chance for someone to get drawn in and get mauled by the undead bear Big James. Um, we had other people drawn in that were like, run we like to squish people, um, in the comics. So it's like, we've run people with cars or they show up as undead. Um, yeah. So there's that, um, being in the, the short films is another way to put yourself in the world. Um, the choo -choo adventure is its own thing. you okay. like, yeah, it's something different. But what I mean but by this that is, is all, like, you're getting these, the people who are being a part of your universe is that all funneled through kickstarter like in order to or do you do no. only like your podcast or like how are do people find out to become a part of this universe as like i'm going to be written into this series or uh like what are the is it just yeah. yeah like i guess fill me in on those blanks okay so um the choose your own adventure is the choose your own adventure the get drawn in and stuff is through the kickstarter right because we'll run different um pledges so people can be written in that way or drawn in that way um we always do the fan interactive short films to participate in those all you got to do is like follow me on social media the okay Facebook that, there it group is. is where i communicate most of what i'm looking for like right now i'm building up for the fourth short film and i just talked to my main actor just a minute ago he came over and i i built him a prop we were talking about how the prop works for when we start filming. Um, but so what I love about the short films is that people can do video or or just send me like um, still still frame. So if you're not tech savvy and not everybody is um, and you're like, I don't or I'm camera shy. I don't want to be on video. I don't want to talk or act. It's fine. Like this one, I zombified like 25 people. <laughs> so all they had to do was send me a selfie. And I, I put it through some like photo filters and made them look like really creepy. So I have this whole stack of 25 pictures of people that have been zombified who I will then edit into the short film at the end. Oh, cool. So they'll be like live acting. And um, this next one, we are going to explore kind of what happens um, when you become undead. So we'll start out with someone who immediately gets squished. Well, he's not really squished, but he has a heart attack and dies. Right? Oh, okay. And then wakes up on the floor. He is now undead. 
So what he goes through, you know, deterioration, how his family copes with it, friends, losing time, you know what I mean? Like now becoming kind of an outcast or a pariah in this community up until the point where he's doing things that he doesn't remember or can't control. And he's becoming a danger to himself, to his family, to the society. Um, and ultimately what happens. And so those pictures of the zombified people that, you know, the selfies and the film together will tie in to deliver the story. Um, I love these because we can explore anything in the world and it doesn't have to be something that Jude St. Clair will experience. Like he might reference it or he might have a moment where he talks about it or thinks about it, but we can dive deep into some of these things um, together and uh, explore it without me having to write an additional side story or fluff. You know what I mean? To, yeah, yeah. To explain I, I that you. stuff. So what's so. the main point of contact for your reader? Like, I, did, I guess I've missed this whole half of whatever you're doing. I only saw like charter comics and uh -huh. your Kickstarters, but you're saying mm -hmm. you've got a whole Facebook group. Do you have a website? Yep. I do. Um, okay. So you yep. have like that section where you're getting people and you're getting them a yeah. part of your, cause you seem to have like a whole interactive universe with your readers to where you're like directly associated with your readers and integrating them into the story, both visually and story wise that I had no idea about. So like, what are you just, so when you started that, I guess like when you started the comic, started drawing it, how did you go from zero to like the, the groups and like, how do you continue to get more people to be a part of your universe? Hmm. That's that's like how do you challenge. grow on Facebook? That's I guess the you challenge, say. right? <laughs> that's what all of us creators are strive to do is to broaden our audience. So I'm on just about every kind of social media that you can think of. I think I'm not on Twitch. And that's you know, maybe not oh, like uh, yeah. Reddit, right. But I'm on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Threads, X. You know, I have a website, I do my podcast, which is great because I interview other indie creators. So I will um I like giving other people a spotlight as well because it's so important to what I do. I know it's important to everybody as well. So kind of like pay it forward, um, give them a spotlight to showcase whatever they're working on. But it also is great for us because we get to build community. We trade tips and tricks. You know, um, there's people that have much more experience with Kickstarter than I do. And there's some people that are brand new that I can help. So we all kind of get together and we help each other. But that way, like I, usually what will happen is that creator will say, Hey, you know, I'm going to be on Lori's show on Tuesday. Why don't you tune in and watch so we can cross audiences as well. So it's like, they'll bring their audience. I get to put them in front of my fans. And then I also get to talk about path of the pale rider to their fans as well. So, I mean, that's the whole point is that we all get to grow together and win hopefully. <laughs> oh, for sure. And that's why yeah. I like bringing, you know, creators like you on who are doing things differently. Every everyone I, I go through is like yeah, like you're saying, we gotta break out of our own bubble in order to grow mm -hmm. our bubble. And so if I'm pulling people that are doing interactive Kickstarter stuff and uh, you know, as opposed to you know, all the other ways that you can grow in this creator owned comic industry. Yeah. Uh you know, yeah, let's all grow together. So I guess yeah. fill me in on what uh, what is Charter Comics and how did you get involved in that? Were they prior to the Kickstarter? Were they after the Kickstarter? Like, and like, I know that I'm, I've interviewed Carissa Grant, who's a part of Charter. I think I'm going to be interviewing a few others that are part of that whole team, but I'm yeah. not sure exactly what it is or where they came from or what it is that is going on there. Cause I, I are they distributed through comic shops or? Um, yes and no, yes and no. <laughs> um, they're, they're a, a, a local publisher they uh, they like to have indie comics under their their name. Um, we're all considered freelance. So we just kind of all band together. But I love them. We do. They have their own shop, which is Pastime Comics in Watuga. I always call it Watuga. I think it's Watiga. I always say it wrong. I want to call it like Johnny Depp in freaking Pirates of the Caribbean. It's Watuga. <laughs> um, but they're in I'm in Texas. They're in uh, it's close to Fort Worth is where we are. And, oh, uh, so OK. It's a truly there. local thing. Texas. Right. So they're Pastime Comics. They have uh, a Comic-Con every year, which is actually coming up called Cowtown, uh, which is in Fort Worth. It's going to actually be uh, September 30th and October 1st, so coming right up. Um, so they'll do that. Um, they We band together and we do 
Uh, we go to Comic Cons together. So we'll travel. We'll go to Vegas. We'll go to all over Texas. So we, you know, and um, what I love about them is if I can't go to a con, they just bring all the books with them. So my book is on the, the Charter Comics table, no matter what Comic Con they go to. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Okay. So, so you're basically yeah. like an indie comic collective based out of Texas. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. 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 Yes. That, now, now it makes sense. Cause I was like, it's like, they're not exactly a publisher. Okay. N yeah. Right. I mean, Clicks technically now. they are Thank a publisher you. because they print my stuff and they distribute it around. Um, but they're not like, you know, we're not an image comics or anything big like that. No. Yeah. Um, I, I, I get you for sure. There's, they're still, yeah. Like a small press publisher. Yes. Um, so uh, as far as your actual printing and distribution like that, so do for for the Kickstarter or for your own website or how, who do you actually use to print your comics? Charter Comics. Printing. And do you know like what uh, company they use or just whatever printer they got? It's their own personal. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, what about, so other than. So how do you actually distribute them other than Charter? Do you do it directly through your website or just their website or your... I have, I'm on their website. I'm on my own website. I'm actually, I have another distributor in the UK. Um, ASAP Imagination is another like-minded um, indie distributor, publisher. Uh, I think they're in Ireland is their main hub. Um, but same kind of thing as Charter, right? Maybe a little, I think they have more titles. They're a little bit bigger but they do digital download for me. Um, so you can go to their websites, ASAP Imagination. They have their own kind of universe set up where they have multiple people writing that universe. Whoa. And then they have um, another section called NE1 World, the letters NE and the number one world. And then people like myself and like Paul Gomez and um, yeah, yeah, Morgan Quaid, um, Carissa Grant, we're all there too, right? Did so you find you can, them or did they reach out to you? Both of these guys reached out to me. Nice. Um, as I started to grow, it's like, I, you know, you get on people's radar through community. Like, you know what I mean? Someone notices you and they're like, you know what? You should really talk to Chris Hayes over at Charter. You should really talk to um, Hades over at ASAP. And we just, you know, set up a meeting. You have a conversation and they're super cool. And everybody wants to succeed. So we all kind of band together and do the things to help each other succeed. Um, That's awesome. So now you're in yeah. the UK and the US. Or yep. North America. I'm, I'm assuming you might also be in Canada as well. Uh, I'm not in any stores there, but I have uh, I have Kickstarter followers that are in Canada. Yes. Then you're in Canada. Yeah, I <laughs> I ship to there. So mm -hmm. um, I usually distribute all the Kickstarter stuff myself. I fulfill it myself because I always do. <laughs> I do extras like um, last campaign. I always add extra questions on my survey that are cryptic. Like it was. Um, what is it? Bears, Beats, or Battlestar Galactica from The Office, right? Beats, oh, okay. Bears, Battlestar Galactica. You don't watch The Office? Oh, my God. I, I know The Office. I love The Office, but I, that's not ringing a bell. I didn't watch when it. Start to it was from the office. episode where Jim per dressed up as Dwight, and he had, like, the yellow shirt and the glasses, and he was, like, in this watch, and, da -da -da, and he's putting the bobblehead. Okay. Right, and he was, like, question, Beats, Bears, Battlestar Galactica. And Dwight's, like, Michael! <laughs> Gotcha. So I put that as a question and nobody knew what I was talking about, but I made little <laughs> origami bears, um, made origami beats and origami little robots. And I added them to the Kickstarter just for fun. So I always do like something extra too. It just, it's, it's a blast. I like doing stuff. like No. That. Yeah. That, so you got, yeah, you're differentiating your perks for your Kickstarters for sure. Um, yeah. So you're I can't four... do that if I shop out the, you know, fulfillment. No. Do you have any other kind of like merchandise or anything like that? Do you do any plushies or enamel pins or anything like that? <laughs> You've been talking to Carissa. I have. <laughs> <laughs> She's been trying to get me to do plushies forever. Um, yeah, of the I'm pale rider, that'd be a bit, I don't know. It's not quite the same as a stuffed animal, but you could probably do a true. horse. Um, I could do the undead bear. That's what every, everybody oh. loves. Big James, the undead bear. Um, even though he's like the worst nightmare you can possibly conjure, but they love him. Big James shirts, big James enamel pins, big James everything, right? Big James, yeah. big James. So that um, leads me to, do you do any conventions or anything like that? Of course. How or, uh, yeah, you were saying that earlier. So how many do you do a year? Um, I'm going to grow doing them. Like this year, I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five. 
Um, Whoa, nice. Okay, you're yeah, you're getting yeah. up there. Yeah, and sure. I like to do. I also go to local comic book stores. Like I'm always tabling on Free Comic Book Day. This weekend, I'm going to be at Geek Out in Burleson. They're going to be opening another location in Arlington in a few weeks. So I'm going to be at their grand opening. Um, I just went over to uh, Carpe Diem in uh, McKinney, Texas today and introduced myself and made friends with them. They're super cool. If anybody's out in McKinney, go check them out. Um, but yeah, so I do that kind of stuff. So I'm at cons and I'm at local comic book stores. Um, I did an author signing in a store in Michigan over the summer, and that was a blast. Um, yeah, so that's kind of like, it's just part of building your audience, right? Cause not everybody's on social media and not everybody does Kickstarter. So the other Avenue is local comic book stores and then cons. So that's really, you know, the four legs you need to do to kind of reach your audience and grow. I don't know if there's more ways I'll do those too. I haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that, that that's why I'm I'm going through all of them cuz I I still learn more avenues that people can take. So you're doing you got the mm -hmm. local scene. You you're not yeah. only a, like directly involved with like your local scene and the fact that you're you have other people that that are on your publisher right there. Then you also got signings and conventions and it sounds yeah. like you got like Texas has just a lot going on in the comic scene. Missouri doesn't have as much. We have really? more than some other mm -hmm. areas, but yeah, I like we do, but it's um it's more of the tabletop gaming and anime community. And gotcha. there's comic fans that are intermixed in between, but it's kind of like the majority of people are going to play the games and, you know, but yeah. So, wow. I feel uh, that. Have, we have all sorts of different kinds of cons out here too, where it's like, I've been to the anime ones and we either are hit or miss there. Um, which one? There's one of the Arlington ones that is just, it's anime. It, the cosplay is great. Like I just go to <laughs> set up the table. I want to talk to all the people that are dressed up like a demon slayer. Come here. I want to talk to you. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah. You target um, out like people that you know will like your stuff and be like, yeah, I got something you'd like. Right. Exactly. You're like, what are you dressed up as? Oh, you would like this. Come here. Let me show you this. Any of the dudes that walk around with cowboy hats in Texas. I'm like, come here, come here, come here. I want to show oh you yeah. <laughs> it's done deal there. <laughs> Uh, oh man yeah. i guess uh what uh are there any so of of your let's just say your facebook group that what facebook groups or other like indie comic podcasts or kind of like communities that are online are you a part of that you think that that can help other creators like if you joined my facebook group or so-and-so's Facebook group, a lot of people are talking because there's a lot of Facebook groups that a lot of people are involved on and nobody's talking on there. You know what I'm That's talking weird. about? Where it's yeah. just like people post and no one's like engaging with it, anything. No one engages. Even if you try, even if you uh -huh. ask bears, you know, uh, uh, it's whatever, no one responds. Like you, you have you know, to like, but there are some that I know people are involved on or Discord or like you have your Facebook group and people are obviously mm -hmm. involved in yours because it's, Yes. directly resulting in sales so like how did you build your how did you start your group and how did you build it like from oh, you know zero to whatever it is like the day you um, started gosh, we started it well in advance of the kickstarter i think we started in 2020 before the first round of artists left um so you know building up excitement for i don't know a year and a half before it was even you know before marco was even involved um no, it was a year before Marco was involved and then it took another three months. So it was like a year and three months. We were constantly adding, sharing, teasing, you know what I mean? Putting yeah. stuff out there. Um, I love playing games and riddles. So a lot of times I'll be like, hey, you know, Marco finished some new pages. Who wants a sneak peek? Answer this riddle. First person to answer the riddle gets the peek, right? And I might send it to like two or three people because, you know, <laughs> for fun. Um, but What's the name of the group it, again? It's just Path of the Pale Rider. It's okay. a private group. You only have to answer one question, which is, do you like comics? It stops like the scammers from coming in. If they don't, if you can't answer, do you like comics? Then what are you doing? Uh, <laughs> what are you maybe? doing here? <laughs> so when you, <laughs> so you, you start a path of pale rider, who was like the first people yeah. you sent it to? Or like, how did you get everybody? How does anybody <laughs> know? Like, well, okay. Okay. So it's like everybody, you know, like I got this comic yeah. coming out, join my group. And then you, and then you started going, okay. Yeah. What, yeah. I mean, like I had put some content in there. Um, so that way if people were like, what's this Lori sending me click? And then they're like, Oh, okay. I see what it is. So it's like, introduce myself, introduce the artist. 
um, tell them what Path of the Pale Rider is all about, you know, have an ele elevator pitch, show some art. Um, okay. So it was like, it was basically like your friends. It wasn't like you posted it on other groups that was like, join right. my group or so, or like kidding. other websites or any kind of like, are you a part of Reddit or anything like that? I'm not. That's the other one I don't do. I, I don't do that, that I but do. like, I, I, people tell me like, this is where it's at, especially with yes. filmmaking. Like people will get, oh. will market their films there. Like it's I crazy. Think. I'm just like, what? Yeah, so I, I haven't grasped that one yet. But that's another avenue that you could look into. Another one I don't yeah. do as much is like TikTok. I haven't, you know, quite grasped mm -hmm. that one. Discord groups or really any kind of like day-to-day. -day. Like there are certain communities where like, are you a part of a specific subculture where it's just like, so where it's just like, I like I am a part of cyberpunk groups because one of the yes. books I release is so what subgroup are you or subculture right. are you a part of? Right, right. And I wanted to answer another question that you asked me earlier, and I didn't answer it all the way. So oh, sorry, um, I'm in, of course, in all these indie groups, like indie comics, indie conspiracy, indie rocks, um, Kickstarter, Kickstarter funding, Kickstarter campaigning, kick introducing comic book artists to writers, introducing, you know, comic book writers and publishers. Um, there's all of those that I'm in. Now, sometimes I'll post stuff in there and sometimes I won't just depending on the group and the group rules. Um, I'm in zombie groups. I'm in horror groups. Um, I look for Western groups. There really aren't any. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's like, my John you're combined nope. with other stuff. Yeah. There, there's, it's, it's like, you won't have a group that's like for Westerns, but you'll have a group that's for like barbaric women of the wild West, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, i'm in like uh sci-fi women stuff like that i'm in some martial art groups stuff like that you know what i mean um yeah, i'm also a... in this great community called uh the madness it's a comic related madness group and that's where i found a lot of community that was really helpful to me when i was brand new um that's how i started with the podcasting journey because they have a bunch of shows that they you know rotate through they have like 40 shows that they rotate through during the week um, and I became a regular guest on this show called the Tuesday Morning Brew. And then the the guy that runs the network is Pops Van Zant, And he was like, you know, I really like it if you took over the show and made it your own. And I was like, I'll do it. I got free that time. Why not? And then I love it. And that's how that happened. So um, wild. people should always join. If you're an indie community, join the Comic Related Madness group. It's amazing in there. Um, you just, there's some people from all walks of life. There isn't any one belief system that they follow right, left, political leaning, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, nice. with each other. It's tough now. It's crazy how much it's been split and like how comics are directly in the middle of like the political wars. <laughs> Dude, when I started, um, before my first Kickstarter, I did one interview with Barney Smith on story comic and he was like, okay, what other interviews do you have? And I was like. I don't know. And he was like, oh, girl, I need to help you. He's like, you need to call Jeffrey Haas, who's a publicist, and he can help you get onto all of these other shows to start promoting your comic. And I did 34 shows, my first Kickstarter, met all sorts of people, and it was awesome. Like, got my Whoa, feet wet in oh, the podcasting. What's so that? you met with a publicist, or you talked with a publicist who got you on like 30 plus shows? Yes. What's that person's name? <laughs> Jeffrey Haas. He's amazing. Jeffrey Haas. How do you spell Haas? H-A-S-S? H-A-A-S. H-A-A-S. Okay. Yeah. Um. And I would not have been successful if it wasn't for Jeff. Uh, if Like he seriously was very hands-on with me. And he was just like, how many shows do you want to do? I was like, how many do I got to do to be successful, Jeff? And he was like, there is no number. You know what I mean? You just, just get it up there. Right. It's and just like, like people say, like content, like you just you got to put it yeah. out. It's got to be quality, but you got to keep putting it out. It's the same exactly. with interviews. Exactly. Um, so he was like, how many how many is feasible? I was like, just start stacking them on and I'll tell you when to stop. <laughs> <laughs> how'd you find how'd you find my channel? Just looking me up. I'm, I wasn't on his yeah. list, was I? Well, I've done a ton of shows already. And this, I've got to have like at least 100 under my belt. But I keep doing the same shows. And yeah. You know, I love them and I will still go on those same shows, but I still need to broaden my audience. So I want to look for new shows I haven't been on before. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, And honestly, and you're going to laugh at this. Um, I went and Googled Carissa Grant. <laughs> <laughs> and what was and she I on? Found, yeah. I went and found a bunch of shows that she was on that I had not been on. 
Um, her and yeah, I are because I was mind blown when she was just like, I've been on over eighty shows and I have a I have a list of one hundred thirty. I was like, whoa, uh, yeah. So I got to get that list, but um, I were down yeah. to like four minutes. So I ah. guess that <laughs> I, two things that I, I missed want to clarify. What's the name of the podcast that you host? It's called the Tuesday Morning Brew. It's on Tuesday mornings at eleven a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And, and you can um, find that on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. It's on the Comics Van Comic Talk with Pops Van Zant. It's also on my YouTube channel as well, which airs every week, but we're on Facebook. Um, it airs on X and uh Twitch. Um so if people follow you, they'll find that show. And and yeah. you are on all your social media. What's your mm-hmm. at? Um Is your name? Most of the time it's my name on X, it's at Path Pale Rider. Um, okay. On TikTok, it's at Path of the Pale Rider with an underscore between all the words, which is super long and annoying, and I regret I'll, it. I'll put day. it all in the description to make it easy <laughs> for people. And then, so I guess to wrap up, give us your elevator pitch on Path of the Pale Rider. What would you do if your body died and your soul didn't leave upon death? People become violent, forgetful, detached. In this world, people, animals, and insects are all stuck together. There is no death, only decay. And we follow Jude St. Clair 10 years into this apocalypse. Things have devolved back to the Wild West. And he is the last person still looking for the answer of why do the dead no longer die? What will he encounter? Conspiracy theories, undead bears, sentient yogurt, aliens, who knows? Um, Stick around to see what he finds. Everything is unbelievable and uh let's see if he can survive long or if he succumbs to an eternity of decay solid hook you got me well done which reminds me like (laughs) who all did you did you how far through the rounds of trying to get it into a film did you do before you turn it into a comic um i talked to a lot of people that are in production i talked to some people that are actually uh in fo- on fox like uh one of the guys who does character design for bob's burgers okay nice a- is a friend of mine and um i was like you know do you know people because honestly you got to know somebody at this point um if you're a brand new writer and you are pitching oh, Netflix, yeah, it's a grind right Fuck. it's gonna be they get 800 scripts a day what makes you different you know what I mean? And it's yeah. almost like you need to have that audience pre-made for them for them to even look at you. That's so what I drive. That's why I, that's my whole channel, you know, right? <laughs> build empires and start with comics and graphic novels are the best way to start an, an IP empire. And, you know, I've gotten mm-hmm. way more meetings with executives through comics than I ever did trying to win screenplay contests. Isn't that weird? <laughs> it's crazy. Well, I mean, Not it's even like, like it's finalists a made storyboard, many. right? Yeah. It's a ready-made storyboard. They can look at it. They can visualize it. They can um, It's easy. Out... They, they see the cover. They they can quickly read it or have somebody read it for them. They tell them it's right. good. They see the audience and it's just like, then you'll get the meeting. Like, yeah. As yeah. opposed to the, a script, it's just like another on the stack that no one's going to read or that, right. you know, but mm. man, well, thanks a lot for coming on. I've got, Absolutely. we've got like uh, 30 seconds left. Is there <laughs> anything else you want to uh, spill out before we go? Um. I would love it if everybody would go to the Kickstarter and watch the welcome video. I have an interview with myself. It's hilarious. Or I get, I'm dressed up as Ellie Brock, uh, investigative reporter who gets run over by a car in one of our short films. And then um, the hygiene set goes on. She might lose an eye. You know, you never know. But it's a lot of fun. I'll send them there. I'll post it this week. (laughs) Excellent. Thank you. Adios. Thanks a lot. Absolutely.